I talking about now? Now all I can see is chaos and confusion and panic. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, fellow hackers. And good day to everyone. Great to see that you have so plenty of you over here. Uh, to get, uh, today we are going to talk about a couple of our happy hobby projects with Kapu and Hi. the uh, those are basically terminals, URLs, and some things about SVG. Uh, our main motivation is to get you excited about those also and go and test it and maybe think more about the possible vulnerabilities or security issues in this client side also. So let's start. I have a couple of uh, quick tips for the new hackers, younger hackers who are not that familiar with the tech things. Main point of this trick is that go and read old Prag articles, basically. Uh, how many of you know that what is Prag article? Excellent. So this is a good tip, because there's quite a few of you who doesn't know what that is. But basically, it's an old hacker magazine release. First releases are from the 80s, and there is releases all the way to the last end of the last year. There's a couple of neat tricks there has been uh, information about how to hack CPUs and so on before those were so popular. So go and read it. You will learn a lot about the hacker culture in the all the way back in the 90s and so on. But a couple of cool tricks which I have found out that for some reason is unknown, although those are have been available at least in 15 years. First thing, simple trick, you can use SSH as some SOX proxy. So basically, if you have access to the SSH server, uh, you can use it as a SOX proxy, and you can tunnel your traffic uh, via that host. And why that is important, normally you have a permission to use the SSH server. But I've seen a couple of times uh, cases where the actual devices have implemented SSH quite poorly, meaning that the it's SSH Clued is clued afterwards to the remote management. This is more common in the network devices or uh, other, let's say, server management. And what that will cause is that if you connect to the SSH, it will automatically authenticate and build up the SSH connection. So you have fully functional SSH connection on already without authentication, and the authentication is prompted as afterwards. So you can use it as an anonymous proxy or something like that. Another trick is to have an invisible SSH session, for example. Invisible, because it's not fully invisible, but if you administrator or someone is using who or finger, for example, this will avoid the allocation of the TTU. So this, I think, was on the Prag article 10 or 15 years ago, but it's a simple trick. I love this kind of tricks. Simple features which can be used as a tricky way. But now to the actual uh, things what we have done in uh, last three years for as a hobby. Terminal demo. Let's hope that everything is OK. By with the I'm OK with the demo cards. OK. so. I will take a telnet connection to my server. Let's see. OK. Then all kind of things start to happen. Uh, this is for the old good times. <laughs> I'm not. That's. Th that's the part of three part of the reason. But okay, now we run this obey. Run. You can see that terminal starts to moving, doing crazy things. It starts to do all kinds of things on your desktop. A 
And this is the funny part. It starts to go minimized, maximum. I cannot do anything at this moment. It's basically dancing and flying. I like it. OK, that's about it. I know that this is nothing new for the old uh, demo scene persons. How many of you might know that what is happening behind the scenes? Excellent. There was only a couple of you, and that, that was my idea that maybe that's not that familiar. Although we are using terminals all the time, and we like to use it because we are elite hackers, of course. But most of us doesn't know what kind of, what's the background of it, what's behind it, what's going on, actually, and what kind of trickery you can do. And let's go to that direction. So it's all about the control characters. This is really, I found it out, let's say, six years ago. Uh, starting point for me with this was that uh, I'm running the SSH honeypot called Kippo, and I started to think that the, with my colleague that, OK, we have the honeypot, so we are server side. So what we can do with the attackers? Because there's an attack vector, of course, because they are connecting to our server. So what's happening on the other side? There's parsers, so they are using terminals, for example. If remember that, oh, there's a control characters. What kind of tricks you can do with the control characters? We made a small brute force script to go through uh, lots of uh, control characters, and our terminal started to dance on the desktop and realized that, whoa, maybe this is something what I need to uh, look up more closely. So I've been doing that at this as a hobby. But the background is that this Control characters are designed in the 70s for devices like the VT52 and so on after that. So it goes all the way back to the 70s. You can normally, you see, as if you're a coder or developer, you need to put new lines and so on. If you are using terminal, new line is control character. There's a, you might know Bell and other stuff. And those were control characters, what you see, saw on the demo. So there's features like invisible text, which might be useful for some reason. There's a feature like a full screen. Do you did see that on the demo. And this is the interesting part, which has been problematic in the beginning of 2000, when someone realized that this might be an issue. So basically what you can do, let me show it. Basically, what you can do is you can query information from the terminal. And because uh, I queried the couple of different queries related to where the cursor is and so on, and how's the status of the terminal. And you see that it replied LN. But the interesting thing is that they, this information is actually injected for the standard input of the terminal. So if I press Enter, it tries to run the command LN, and so on. So you have, a, as an attacker, you might have been able to, uh, well, I started to think about that, what else I can do. Can I manipulate commands and so on to the terminal? So what kind of other options there are? Because it's a bit worrying that server side can control my terminal uh, with the control characters. Uh, then there's uh, this is was the one of the uh, old tricks back in beginning of the 2000. Uh, you can still use the set part. So basically, you can with control character you can inject or give a title for the terminal. This works still, uh, but back in 2000, they removed the part that you could be able to read the title. Who has an idea what's, why is that function removed? OK. You will see it later on. And for some reason, there's a, for example, function enable VT52. Do you remember the VT52? It was, it was on the slides before. It's made in 74. 
Okay, fair point. Someone might be still using it, right? But for some reason, whoops, for some reason, if I take, uh, let's take this one, and it's still working. Okay, I have a modern OS X terminal. I just enabled the VT52 mode. For some reason, someone has uh, ported all the way back to the VT50, all the from the 70s ported to the modern terminal. So if I say LS or have any kind of color, as you can see over here, it will be scrambled. And the funny thing is that you cannot escape from here because now it doesn't support the control characters itself. So now you are, well, basically stuck in that mode. Okay. So the impact part, I think this is raising the questions that, of course, you can do cool demos, like uh, my, my cool demo was about the flying terminals, but the real uh, vectors are, of course, to, that attacker may con, uh, manipulate the connections if there's no encryption. You can ma in inject control characters those kind of in to take those kind of connections. And especially, there's a potential vulnerabilities in terminals. I guarantee that there is. And most common what we see today is that someone will figure a way to inject control characters to uh, log files, which basically means that when the admin logs in with the SSH and is going through the logs with cat, for example, those will trigger the terminal to do crazy things. So basically, you might be able to do things like hide your logs and so on. Uh, I think in last year, I was managed to get some book bounty from the one uh, particular uh, server side with this one. So. Basically, what I've seen that every web server has implemented this bug when they have created the new web server. There's uh, almost, at least all what I checked, there's uh, always uh, that kind of vulnerability. So there has been in the history many of those. There's uh, some, but as you can see, those are mostly in the beginning of the 2000. And that's the re part of the reason why I'm presenting this now, because there hasn't been that much research on that topic. It's a couple of the examples of the vulnerabilities. First one, there's a control character which was meant to dump all the data from the screen, what you are seeing, to one file. So uh, as we know, you can do it also remotely. You were able to sit, set title, and as you see over here, it can be command. So this is terminal title, then you read it again and the information is injected to your standard input, input, and you can use the trickery like uh, invisible text, so you won't see it. But the command is on your standard input. Then whatever command you run after that, it will run the uh, malicious code also. So that's the reason why the function is removed nowadays. But I see all the time new terminals uh, coming, and it seems to be a trend right now, so when you see a new terminal, go and test it. Do the old tricks. Those might still work. And, and I can actually show. So for example, with the I term, if I have a, I have an interesting lock over here. Should have. <laughs> it's over there. So if you cut it, for some reason, my I term just quit it unexpectedly. Okay, so you can find that kind of things. So, how to hack it? You can do it like I did. Uh, go and grab uh, old manuals. This is from VT100, made in 78. You can see the, all the cool control, control characters over there. And try those. Actual, actually, one of the bugs uh, re related to this, and that control character was not, for some reason, in the common list. You can find from the internet, from the Wikipedia, lists of the control characters. It was specific 
for the VT100, and for some reason it was also implemented for the, that terminal, and it was poorly implemented, so it caused crash, and might lead to another problems. Okay, then that's about the old school stuff. We go more on the URLs, and of course we start with the demo, because that's that's how we rule, let's say. Uh, okay, about the URLs. There's a demo about it. I go to Bing. What's the good search word? Let's say disobey. Yeah, disobeys. And you can find interesting articles. Let's go there. Yeah. Oh, for some reason, I'm not controlling the machine anymore. My Twitter went up. There's a template for tweets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Ah, how I get rid of this? Okay, it went sleep. Oh, well, Twitter tweet. Okay, now it's doing Samba modes. What? It's opening terminals. What? <laughs> okay. And Kasper is going to talk about these. Yes, thank you, Mikko. That was One excellent. question. How many of you have an idea what's going on? Excellent. Oh, excellent. Okay, I will talk to you about our URL and research project. And thanks, Mikko. So, you may have noticed that Turmio likes to hack terminals, so in the autumn 2015, Turmio learned how to launch terminal manual pages from your web browser or from web page. So basically, with Axman page URL handler, you can launch terminal manual pages and you just copy paste it to your URL bar in your browser. But is it safe that you can so easily launch terminals with URL handlers? So basically you can create an iframe or something like that on the web page and those will launch. I find it a bit worrying that my terminal is launching from the web page. Yeah. So we tried to research that, and first we wrote D-Trace script, and we analyzed it, and to us it appears to be safe to use that action page URL handler. But we wrote a vulnerability assessment in our project repository, if you are interested. So, in the winter 2015, we were just happy hobby hacking, and uh, we also did some workshopping with Capsi activists. And we created the first private wiki for our URL handler research to document and analyze things. And in the winter, we also realized that there are plenty of URL handlers. For example, my, in my Clean OSX install. There are uh, approximately uh, two, one hundred over one hundred URL handlers, and there are even more handler-specific query parameters. And we also realized that there are bunch of browsers available, and there are also many injection vectors. Okay, so browsers handle different URL handlers. So some browsers whitelist, some blacklist URL handlers, and some browsers prompt URL handlers. For example, Firefox and Google Chrome always prompt URL handlers. And Apple Safari used to all launch all of them, and I will show you are 
video about it later. And yeah. Yeah, and about the uh, uh, different kind of habits, how to handle the URLs. For example, at the moment, iPhone will open, let's say, you, you want to inject a uh, text message to somebody's iPhone. You can do it with the iframe, for example. It's a feature. Yeah. So you sure. can put the content of the text message and put the phone number for the text message. Only thing what user need to do is to push the send button. But that kind of things. Yeah. And some uh, of the some of the applications are blocked, but for for some reason, for example, that is not prompted. It automatically opens. Yeah. And browsers handle differently a redirect, and it changes that prompting thing. And in the spring 2016, we created our GitHub repository. And we listed some presenters with parameters in there. And we also did some background research and listed some links and URL schemes in there. And we wrote a couple of vulnerability assessment to this in there also. So go and try it yourself. Yeah. And we see also what kind of different kind of URLs there are. Yeah. We also got the domain urlhandlers.info and .com and yeah and we started web user interface but it's still a working process so and we also wrote lots of tools to collect registered url handlers on OS X and on windows and especially if you are familiar with the hacking with the android or iphone please join our community and try new things with it. Yeah, and there are really much of uh, URL handlers in uh, clean installations also. For example, in Windows clean installation, there are, for example, Candy Crush Soda Saga URL handler, which launches Candy Crush. That's weird. Who don't want to play Candy Crush? I don't know. So, in the sum, summer 2016, I was working for OSPG, Oulu University Secure Programming Group, and I created more tools to test these URL handlers and collect them, and I listed also some experiments and results in the GitHub repository. And we also focused on the awareness. We created many videos and Next, I will show you one of them. And there you can see web screens of the web, web page. And there are basically plenty of URL handlers that will launch if you go to that web page. And I will show you what happens if I go to that web page. Thank Whoa. you. If you see something like that, you know what's happening. <laughs> Quite amazing, yeah. And in the autumn 2016, I had to go back to school. And we also were at a bull meet. And actually, in the autumn 2016, Apple fixed some problems with Safari. So Safari won't anymore launch every URL handler. Uh, it prompts before it launches them. Yeah. yeah. Figure that out. It was still before that you were able to mount Samba share for some third party automatically background uh, with the URL handlers. Yes. And uh, next I will show you 
what might be a problem with that prompting? <laughs> and in next video, our browser is Firefox and operating system is OSX. So I will show you. Second time. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there are lots of prompting action going on. Yeah. One comment about that. But once again, it doesn't necessarily have to be hard to do this kind of things. For example, this is just well, bad feature which is, seems to be forgotten to test in the security community. There has been some, but not that much. And if you think about the, all the possibilities, this is definitely something that needs more for research. Yes. And uh, now we are here, and we ne really need your help with the URL handlers. As I said, there are um, plenty of URL handlers, and Please go and check out our project repository. It's in here, GitHub OSPG URL handlers. Thank you. Thanks, Kapu. So as a part of our motivation is to try to share our happy hobby projects with you that you can also participate. We have a... Uh, we don't have that much of time compared to the, all the vectors that are related to the, also with the terminals, but with this. So come and help us. Okay. Then there's a sec uh, third one, which I hope is something what you will present in next disobey. It's related to the SVG. When I submitted this uh, topics for this talk, it wasn't uh, that commonly known for my point of view when I talk to the other security researchers. Uh, so what is SVG? How many of you know what you can do with it? Excellent. Half of you, almost. Yeah. So there's uh, lots of trickery you, what you as a hacker might be able to do. It allows f file inclusions, can in include JavaScripts, iframes, so on all kind of things. You might, it looks like something like this. Uh, there's a couple of tricks used over there. Try to load the local files, for example. And there's a SVG part, and then you can write your scripts over there. So this is, once again, this is not hard. But it's still something which is not that commonly tested, because many of the uh, I don't know if the virus is right term, but the, many of the messenger systems and many of the client sites are not handling the SVGs correctly. For example, there was the case with the Facebook Messenger, I think a couple of weeks ago. So what that did, someone sent you a photo. It's, it was your friend. Looks like a photo, at least, but it's SVG. You should know that what you are able to do with it. But in this case, it's just redirected you to the page where it was, which was looking like a YouTube and recommended you to install Chrome extension. So it wasn't not that much about the SVG itself. It was just one way to inject the redirection. But because there's uh, multiple uh, options over there, uh, I have done already couple, some of the tests and find out that there's a huge amount of variation how the different kind of clients handles the SVG. So nowadays applications are built uh, with the, uh, as an HTML application and so on. Think about the web email servers the, uh, where you can log in and it renders your emails and you might be, you can use SVG as an attachment and you can send an email which includes the SVG, and when it's rendered, it will run 
it should not run, but it might run the JavaScript which is in the SVG if that's rendered. And there's a huge variation uh, how the different kind of clients handle that. So if you have something on your, you can grab it, my sample SVG from there, it will basically do these things, test simple JavaScript tricks, uh, tries to read local files, so if you are able to send it to the local machine, uh, it tries to download external JavaScript and run it, and gives you feedback about it, and does, tries to load a, a remote image. In practice, it looks like this. So over here we can see that the it didn't a, wasn't able to include the files, which is good. Of course, it, this is a Safari, so it shouldn't allow that. Uh, it was able to load the remote image. Once again, it seems reasonable because this is Safari. But the interesting thing is that if you have that locally, for example, you can actually see over here that it's rendered, and you can see the images which are not working over there. If you look it with the preview, it will not run JavaScript and wasn't able to download it, but it will show the image, remote images. This is the preview of the OS X. And if you open it locally, basically double-clicking it, it looks like an image, but as we know, it's a, a well, basic uh, web page which might include everything. So now it's able to load the ETC password and so on, and do the tricks. So I think there's a logic failures in many of the clients. So go and check it. For example, one more example, because I have uh, three minutes of time. So another thing is, which is at the, while I was uh, making this presentation, I tested with the iPhone with the different kind of messengers. iPhone doesn't run JavaScript and doesn't load the external images. But for some reason, iPad is able to run JavaScript. Doesn't load external images and so on, but didn't manage to go any further with that. So if you are interested, that might be one thing to try with the SVG. So send SVG image with the, some messenger. When you open it with the uh, iPad, it will run JavaScript on the iPad session. And it might be tricky and m something what you want to check out more. OK. Kapu, did I forget something? Uh, I don't think so. OK. Hmm. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank I'm the you. Turmio. He's the Kapu. Yeah. And contact us if you have want to participate. We are over here also hmm. today. So thank you. Any questions? Excellent talk. Did you try to do any nasty tricks to Tor browser? I did. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, referring to the URLs or SVG. <clears throat> uh, well, URLs are, I think, prompted. Yeah, prompted. Yeah. but. That's good. As it inclu might include the same problem as the Firefox, as you saw in the, on the video. But it, mm. it doesn't, uh, when we tested later on, it doesn't work anymore. It was, was it 2016 when the crash yeah, happened? Yeah, 2016. But there it is the same kind of yeah. challenges. It, it doesn't mean it, that it could happen again. So, yeah. kind of crash. Yeah. Thanks. Howdy ho, Turmio. Howdy ho. Uh, you are fake news. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, look, one question regarding the uh, URL handlers and the SMB side. Did you test it on, on Windows uh, uh, that uh, when, when you trigger the SMB, does it send something on a network side? Uh, the client? Yeah. Yes. You tested that. I mean, did you test that? Uh, does it send some request on an SMB that you, you could utilize, utilize in a further, on, 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 you know? Yeah. Doing tricks. Yeah, and the funny thing is that the URL includes the, some of the features. You can use the username and password and select some authentication with the URL and 
so on. So, but if you are meaning that did it send to the local network or something like that, I didn't check that. But yeah, it will really, you can basically create URL which tries to connect to your local environment if you know what's still in, inside of the local network. Or if you know more about Samba trickery, there might be something more about related to the broadcast and to the local domain and so on. I am not that familiar with the Windows system, so my tests are related more to the OSX side. Yeah. So that's definitely one thing what you should n test on the Windows side. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Does the terminal hack only for iTerm and not for the default OSX terminal? Oh, that's a good question. I forgot to mention that. Uh, there's a variation what control characters work in the different kind of terminals, but I have fast all the terminals what I managed to find out, let's say 10 of them, and everyone crashed during the fussing except for some reason GNOME terminal. But Xterm, Aterm, uh, OSX terminal, uh, Iterm, Iterm2, uh, Putty, and yeah, maybe those are at least those. But those problems are now fixed. I've reported them, and the, except the item is not yet fixed because I found it while making this presentation. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, can Thanks. you maybe after the questions show the terminal demo again because I missed it. I was at the back. Okay. You yeah, and you can connect to that crashterminal.org with your terminal if you like. <laughs> Uh, about URL handlers, if you don't want your URLs to be handled, are there any tools uh, to block those, or are they yeah. a free game? Uh, you have to choose correct browser, I think. Good browsers are, for example, Google Chrome. It prompts URL handlers, so you are safe from them. Yeah, also and in that way that it won't get jammed afterwards. And yeah. one, that's a good question also for the uh, terminal part. Yeah. Oh. And there are other browsers too, for example, Tor browser, uh, yeah. Yeah. With the terminals, for example, you can use screen, which are escaping some of the, or stripping down some of the control characters. On the other hand, screen has uh, own control characters, and I've been not testing that. Tmux seems to help a lot also. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, basically, quick ones. And I have a question about terminals. Mm -hmm. uh, in your demo, you have put a query in Google for disobey, but you didn't click any link. Yep. Uh, so you've put some characters in the main uh, page of disobey. If not, how did it happen? Yeah, that's a good question. We planned that, that in purpose and see that did the uh, crowd asked, so thank mm. you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we were discussing beforehand that should we explain it, but didn't. But yeah, okay. So it was working in the way that the we have a local uh, redirection to the. So every time you try to go to uh, that service, it's actually running from the locally and there's an iframe, and you will see the right page in the iframe, but it's on the uh, invisible iframe where we injected all the URLs. So it's demo environment in the sense that you, in reality, you need to have a man in the middle or something like that. But that's working over HTTP, so it's not that hard of thing. Thank you. Yeah, <coughs> so uh, just a comment regarding the uh, those terminal escapes. Uh, you basically left out one of the most important things of the, on the impact side. Mm -hmm. If you're do doing incident response work, yeah. Many of the Good tools point. actually fail completely if you're using the wrong commands. So kids, remember, don't do, don't do tail minus F. Instead, uh, use less plus, capital F, and then you're good. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, thank you for reminding. Uh, yeah, definitely. And if you use tools like less or more, those will strip down the uh, control characters, so you can limit the impact side. But if you are using tail or cat, they don't. But they are basically based on the idea that they just raw, do raw dumping. So good point. 
Okay. Yeah. I think we need to go out of stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.